Hi, I'm Scott from Golden Wing Docks. Out of all the things I've done to my bike, the one thing that gets the most comments, the most questions is, without a doubt, the bike PC. We're gonna talk about it today and give a little bit of an announcement that people have been asking for. So, here you go. Coming up next on Gold Wing Docks. <laughs> Right, first I have to apologize for the state of my hair. It's uh, a little overgrown and I've spent the entire morning underneath my car, so it's a bit of a disaster at the moment. Okay, the bike PC. Nine years ago, in 2012, I wanted a gear position indicator for my Goldwing. It was actually something that was available once when they had the digital dash on the earlier Goldwings. It just had a little number there, or N, showing you what gear you're in. Now that's really just a convenience. Most of the time, you know what gear you're in. You get to know your bike, you can tell by the speed and the sound of the engine what gear you're in. But once in a while, I just forget. Uh, most commonly, I'd be on the highway and after I've been riding for a while, maybe I downshifted to pass somebody and I didn't think about it and I'm not really paying attention. The miles are clicking off and I think, geez, the, the, the engine sounds like it's running a little bit high. And then realize, oh, I'm in fourth gear. Okay, so it's happened a few times. More commonly is when I would come to a stop and I usually downshift through the gears till I get to second gear and then come to a stop with the clutch in and then once I've stopped or just as I'm about to stop, I will shift down into first. Once in a while, that shift doesn't work. You'll be in second, you shift down and you're, maybe you're going too slow, there's not enough movement in the transmission for the shift to complete. You end up in neutral or you end up in second gear. Second gear is not the end of the world because the bike is going to go. It's going to accelerate a little bit slowly. You're going to have to slip the clutch a bit more, but you'll get where you're going. Where it's a little bit dangerous is when you shift into neutral without realizing it. You don't see that big green N in your face. And then you try to start off and you're expecting the bike to go. You pick your feet up and the bike doesn't go. And all of a sudden now you're balancing on a motionless bike. It's just kind of a little reassuring help where you can look down and say, oh, yep, third gear. So the bike doesn't have that facility, but it has a gear position switch in it. So you could make something that would show what gear you're in it. I thought, I'm gonna make one. I first thought, I'll just make some kind of discrete electronic component that looks at the various gear position switch lines and then displays it on a little digital display. But then I thought, you know what else I'd really like? A thermometer. So I started thinking, well, maybe if I had a little LCD screen, I could put the gear position switch and a thermometer in there. Why not? I've got the space. Of course, now we're getting into a little bit more logic. So maybe it needs to be a microprocessor in here as well. And especially if it's LCD screen, I'm going to have to have some way of getting that data onto it. Now I have to qualify this. I am a computer programmer. It's what I have done for a living for a really, really long time, pretty much my entire life. I know electronics, I know computers, I've, I have done programming on everything from tiny little uh, PIC chips with the, you know, embedded processor chips to ancient mainframes, multi-user time-shared systems to modern web pages. I've done, it, I've done pretty much all of it. Uh, I've also done quite a bit of electronic design, so I have that background as well. So, of course, as I started thinking about this, I thought more and more, well, maybe if it does this, if I'm gonna have this kind of processor, maybe I could do this as well, and maybe I could do that. You know what I'd really like? I'd like some heated gear, but I don't really wanna have a heated gear controller that I have to add in. Why don't I just build it into the computer? Why not? So the project started growing and growing and growing, and as I came up with more and more ideas, I just added more and more code to it. We got to the point where we are today. I got my bike PC installed. I got it debugged, which took you know, a lot of test rides. And, and I had an issue with my original electronic design that I was able to overcome with code. So being able to find a, a defect in your original circuit and think, oh, I really don't want to have to redesign and rebuild all those boards. But then I thought about it, I thought, well, actually, I think I might be able to compensate for that in the program that runs the processor. And I was. So that, that's really kind of thrilling. It's kind of like what NASA does. They, they've got something off in Mars. They can't fix it, but they can probably work around by changing the code that operates the hardware. And that's what I did with this. So that was just fascinating. I, I just love that stuff. So let me just go over real quick 
what this thing does. So here's the cockpit of my 1500. As you can see, my bike PC is right here. That's the screen of it. The actual computer itself is buried inside the fairing down in there. On the left side of the handlebar, I have this small pod where I have switches that let me turn lights and things on and off. And then on the back side of that, I have the controls that I use to control the bike PC. This is an up down switch, momentary up down, and then this is a push button momentary select switch. All right, I've turned the lights off in here so you can better get an idea of what this thing does. When I switch it on, we get a, a screen that lights up. Halsco Group is my company name. And then we get the computer itself. This is the home screen. And of course we see the temperature, what gear we're in, the voltage of the system, and then a little graph and a time clock. Now this time clock I use to count how long I've been riding. So what happens is when you're in neutral, that clock stays at zero. And as soon as you shift into gear and start moving, it starts counting up. And all that does is when I look down, I can say, well, you know what? I've been riding for an hour and 30 minutes. Maybe it's time to take a break. And it's actually quite useful. I really like that feature. Pushing my momentary button, I will cycle through the various different screens. First, we have glove heat jacket heat, audio select, brightness, which I'll talk about in a moment, and some other options. Now my, my radio has some auxiliary functions built into it where I can plug in my satellite radio or an auxiliary input from a, a three and a half inch jack that I can plug in and I can switch between those and right now it's telling me I'm listening to the satellite radio. So let's go to the audio selection. So once I go to that screen, I can simply click the up or down switch and switch between the various inputs. So there I'm listening to the stock 1500 radio, here my auxiliary input, and here I'm listening to the satellite radio. If I do nothing and just leave this be, wait for a few seconds, it will automatically switch back to the main screen after a few seconds. This will directly control high amperage heated gear. So I've got two channels on it. You can plug in directly. I've got my gloves and my jacket set up. So here I can adjust the duty cycle on the gloves. So here is full power, maximum heat, or I can just put it all the way down to zero and turn it off. Same thing for the jacket, all the way on or all the way off. And, and that's really nice because I can adjust that heat level on the fly with very little uh, input. I can do it with my left hand without even thinking about it. Audio we just covered, brightness. So you can adjust the brightness of the backlight of the screen, and it does that with pulse width modulation. You can actually turn it all the way off if you want. And what that, that's used for is the amount of brightness in the nighttime. Now it has a, a photo cell on the top, you can see here, that looks at the ambient light. So in sunlight, this is at full brightness. At nighttime, it will, it will dim itself down and the level to which it dims itself is selected right here. So basically, I, I think about nine is what I generally have it on, which is about right. You'll notice that it starts out very bright and then over the course of about 10 seconds or so, it will dim itself down. Now I'm in a dark garage right now, so it's starting to dim itself down. And the reason it does that over a few seconds is so that if you go underneath a, a bridge and you get a shadow, your screen isn't gonna start flickering back and forth. Now it's pretty tough to tell in here uh, that the screen is actually dimming down because my camera is actually adjusting automatically for the difference in, in light level. But you can trust me, it's actually dimming itself down at this point. Lastly, we have options. The temperature graph, I can turn that on or off. So let me talk about the temperature graph first. As you can see here, it's 67.4 degrees in my, in my garage right now. And it is tracking over time what the temperature is. So you'll get a bar graph that kind of goes, scrolls slowly across here, and you can get an idea of what the temperature trends are, which is really helpful when you start seeing that coming down, you're like, okay, I know it's starting to get cold, maybe I need to pull over and change my gear. Or you can see, uh, yeah, it's kind of fun. You can, if you go down to a valley where it's cooler, you can actually see it dip down over time. And it's actually quite a useful feature. So we can change that temperature graph and turn it off. And now instead, we have 
indicators that show our glove and jacket heat settings. So if I go and turn up the glove heat and the jacket heat, you'll see those values are now showing up there. So it's just a, at a quick glance, you can see what your heat, heated gear is set to. So I typically have this set to show the heated gear in cold weather, and then in hot weather, I will have it set to show the temperature. So I will switch it back to temperature. The temperature scale, you can change how long you want to show it. So 60 minutes, 90 minutes, 102 hours, all the way from five or anywhere. I think 45 is what I generally leave it at. It seems to work well at 45. Uh, I also had the ability to switch between boots and jacket. Right now it's set to jacket. I also have heated boots. So if I wanted to use that channel to, instead of gloves, or rather instead of a jacket, show my, run my heated boots, it just changes the name of it in the little picture of a boot that I drew there. So it's just a little feature that lets me change that to, to help me remember which one it is. Negative LCD lets me basically turn it so it's dark on white. Uh, I much prefer it the other way around, but the option is there in case, you know, it, it was easy to do in software, so I did that. And then debug mode, uh, is just exactly what it says. It lets me debug. There's little dots here in the bottom that, that indicate that the, the system is working. If, uh, if I go into the heated gear, turn that on. Oops, let me go back to jacket. You'll see the little dots turning on and off that indicate when the jacket and the, and the heated gear is turning on and off. So that's, that's the duty cycle. You can see it's turning on, off, on, off. And how long it stays on over a, a, a two second period is how much heat is actually going into there. So when it, you adjust the heat level, it's not adjusting the amount of current, it's actually switching it on full on and full off for a certain amount of time. And because it takes a while for that stuff to heat up, you don't feel it turning on and off overall how much heat goes in over time is based on that. It's, it's called a duty cycle. It's how most heaters work. And for reading the temperature, there's a temperature sensor right in the very front of the front grill where the air comes into the bike. So when I first designed and built this thing and posted about it on Goldwing Docs, the reaction was, as you would expect, can you make me one? Hey, can you start manufacturing these and sell it? I would buy one. And, and I, 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 I mean, I, for a little bit, I seriously considered doing that. Uh, I thought maybe it is a product that I could actually design and build and have manufactured and sell. Um, and I didn't. And the main reason for that is installing it is not simple. It is a complex task. And the main reason for that is the gear position sensor. It's really difficult to get to. You have to disassemble the front of the fairing down here and get into a little tiny area to disconnect a connector and it's really tough to do. And I thought if I build this as a product that I have to sell, that means I also have to support it and people are going to have issues installing it and they're going to come to me for support and it's going to be difficult for me to provide that level of support and information and help to get the thing installed. Um, and people are going to have problems installing it because, like I said, it's not a simple thing to do. Uh, and because of that, I thought, you know what, I don't think I have the resources and time to support this as a product. So I never went ahead and released it as a product. Uh, I never released it at all. And that brings me to my announcement. I thought enough people have asked me about this and I actually had someone specifically say, hey, can you give me the, the, the code that you wrote for this? I'd like to build one. And, and that got me thinking, if people have the skills to actually build this themselves, they no doubt have the skills to install it. So who does it harm if I just release the design of it publicly so that anyone can build one of these themselves? And that is my announcement now. If you have a look at the link in the description, I am linking to a similar announcement on the Goldwing Docs website where I am releasing the design of the circuit, the circuit board, and the software that runs it uh, for public use. It's still a copyrighted design. I hold rights to it, but I am freely licensing 
Anybody who wants to do it, you can go ahead and do it as long as you're not doing it for commercial purposes. If you want to turn this into a commercial product and sell it, uh, you're out of luck. I'll come after you with lawyers. But if you just want to build this yourself, go to it, knock yourself out. If you come up with design changes, you want to improve it, you want to change the software, be my guest. So that's what I'm releasing here today. Have a look at the Goldwing Docs site at the link down in the description below. And let, I'm really eager to see what people do with this. If anybody is interested in building it, I, I'll certainly help. If you have ideas, maybe you're not a programmer and you, you've done some changes, you maybe you want some people to help. I, I'm, all, I'm all about that. I'll, I'll certainly do everything I can to help. Well, I hope you like what you saw here today. And I hope this is of at least some interest and use to some people. If you like what you saw here today, please don't forget to click like and subscribe down below. It really helps us out. If you have comments, anything at all about this video, about other videos you'd like to see, please leave a comment down below. And of course, don't forget to check out the Goldwing Docs forum. There's so many great friendly people there waiting to help. Thanks for watching.